My name is Jessie Kretzer Graham and I live here in South Carolina and my husband and I attend Solid Rock Church of Market Commons and have for about a year and a half. I first went there with a dear friend and the first time I went I just sensed the presence of the Lord. I enjoyed the uh, very authentic and passionate Bible teaching and the energy and the and just the spirit and the passion within the service from the music to the message. My husband and I then went together and he experienced the same thing. And we continued to be fed, nourished, and, and taught through this church. And I also consider myself to be a part of a church in Hagerstown, Maryland, which is my hometown. And I experienced church at Hub City Vineyards in Hagerstown. The other thing is I, I worship with Passion City Church online every week with Louis Giglio. And so I really consider myself a part of multiple churches and it's been a blessing. So I, I don't know the truth of the current tragedy that Solid Rock is experiencing with the death of the pastor's wife, Micah Miller. I know that mental health is real. I know that domestic abuse is real. And that is the question and the accusations that seem to be around. You know, what is, what is this? Is this mental health? Is this domestic abuse? Is this some of both? What is this? You know, it's the battle for truth. And I trust that God is gonna reveal the truth. And you know, that's gonna take time. And my heart goes out to the family and the friends of Micah. Because from what I have observed, she knew and she loved the Lord. She loved people. She had a beautiful voice and she used it to sing God praises. I believe her family and friends grieve with a shattered heart, but with hope. And if you relate to the potential truth of domestic violence in this case, in this situation, I would encourage you not to lose your faith in God over this. I would encourage you to seek prayer warriors, surround yourself with prayer warriors, and get professional counseling support. And I would encourage you to get the book by Lisa Turkhurst, Good Boundaries and Goodbyes. I believe knowing God is one thing. I believe experiencing him is another. And I felt compelled to, to come and share what God put on my heart because I believe God put it on my heart and asked me to use my gifts to, to put a voice to the innocent people here that can be hurt over the battle for the truth in this tragedy. Many people have been hurt in the church by other people. Um, but you know what? Many more have been comforted, prayed for, provided for, encouraged, discipled, and mentored. I, my heart really goes out to the, the members, the, um, the people that have just barely started coming to Solid Rock, the people that have been there for a very long time, the people that have recently left. And, you know, I don't want to see, and I don't believe God wants to see the people scattered and to shrink back and stop coming to church and meeting together where they can encourage each other, where they can love on each other, where we can um, just truly make a difference as a community. So, as far as JP goes, the pastor, I pray for his pain, his past, his future, and I pray for his family. I know that God doesn't waste our pain, and he is a God of justice and mercy. I know that he's a God that we can count on to keep his promises. And his church is his bride, as Micah said so beautifully in one of her messages on Facebook. So why God? You know, I'm sure 
many people want to say, why? Why could this even be allowed to happen? And, you know, of course we don't know. Of course we don't have the answer. But what we do know is we know that God gives everyone free will. He gives us free will to choose him or not to choose him. He gives us free will to make every decision that we make in life. He truly gives us free will. So we, you know, when we live the um, consequences of our free will or we live the blessings of our, whatever our free will choices are. And sometimes what happens is we find ourselves injured by the shrapnel of the free will of someone else. And we don't know, we don't know what the truth is. We don't know all the facts yet, but what we do know is that this is going to take time. And in the meantime, I think that we need to continue to draw together and be there for each other. You know, sometimes we get to bask in the rays of sunshine from someone else in the room because of their choices. And I have a saying, that I've lived by and it's sometimes you need the church and sometimes the church needs you or sometimes you need to be in a situation, a social situation and sometimes that social situation needs you. So at the end of the day, we all get to choose, you know, who we're going to follow, what we're going to believe in, what we're going to like, what we're not going to like, you know, who we're going to love. Um, so Solid Rock, I just want to say I would encourage you to keep loving God keep loving people, continue to be a church of love, and allow God to clean the house. I believe that Solid Rock can be bigger and better than it's ever been and serve this community in a way that it's meant to serve the community. But God's got to clean his house first. And that's painful. So we need to stick together, be together, and love each other. Let's believe that God can use all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And we'll let God do what only God can do. But in the meantime, let's be patient and let's try to control our pain and our anger and our confusion and our bewilderment and go to God and let him use us to bring healing to a community, to, to this family, um, to these families. Um, and, you know, let's be a part of the solution and not um, be a part of the problem. So that's what God put on my heart that I didn't want to share, but I felt compelled over and over and encouraged by several very close people to me that God gave me a voice and I'm supposed to use it for him. So I hope this makes a difference for somebody somewhere along the line, mostly for God.